We have officially entered 2023, and among many things, this means that we are officially in the month when Super Smash Bros. Brawl celebrates its 15th anniversary. With the game launching on January 31st, 2008 in Japan, eventually making its way to the West in March and to Europe and Australia at June's end, I know I'm very, very late on this trend, but to commemorate my favorite Smash's Crystal Year, I thought it would be neat to try to throw together an iceberg specific to Brawl and cover some of my personal favorite rumors and theories surrounding the game, as well as other facts and secrets I'd never come across up until now. So, without further ado, let's get into the Super Smash Bros. Brawl Iceberg Explained. Break the targets! Sakurai Masahiro Sakurai is a Japanese video game director and game designer best known as the creator of both the Kirby and Super Smash Bros. series. Of course, Sakurai would be the overall director and writer for Brawl, who was infamously surprised that he was working on the game after the late Satoru Iwata announced the game at a press conference regarding E3 2005. Sakurai would also provide voice work for King DDD in Brawl as well. HAL Labs this refers to HAL Laboratory, the Japanese game development studio that Sakurai was a former employee of and Satoru Wada was the president of at the time of Brawl's release. When Brawl was in development, Sakurai had already launched his own studio, Sora, and it would eventually be listed as the primary developer for Brawl. Despite this fact, many people who play hours and hours of Brawl like myself can recall the HAL Laboratory logo appearing on the game's startup screens. Final Smash Of course, Final Smashes are iconic finishing moves for fighters in the Smash Bros. series that were added to the series in Brawl. Sakurai revealed in an interview with Iwata that he actually wanted to include Final Smashes in the original Smash Bros, even going as far to record voice clips for each of them. However, the Nintendo 64's limitations could have been the reason why they were scrapped and the idea wouldn't be implemented until Brawl. Some of these voice clips, which were hidden in the Smash 64 debug menu, were eventually used in Brawl. Subspace Emissary Subspace Emissary, full title Adventure Mode The Subspace Emissary, is the story mode campaign for Brawl and the successor to the adventure mode featured in Melee. The mode is a side-scrolling adventure with platforming similar to 3D Mario and Kirby games. However, it retains all the basic mechanics of the Super Smash Bros. series, featuring a world map and a linear story progression that contain all of Smash's roster of fighters crossing over to defeat a common enemy. That enemy, of course, being... Taboo. Taboo is the strange Dr. Manhattan-esque character that serves as the overall antagonist for the Subspace Emissary. He is a powerful godlike entity who embodies the dimension of subspace. He uses the subspace bombs to send entire locations to his dimension, where he absorbs their power to increase his own, pursuing his plan to conquer and subjugate the universe. His name is a corruption of the word taboo, referring to something forbidden. His name is commonly spelled wrong as many simply recall his name as the conventional word. Third Party Characters this addresses the breakthrough that the Smash Bros. series had with the additions of Solid Snake and Sonic the Hedgehog as playable fighters in Brawl, as they would become the first non-Nintendo properties to join the Super Smash Bros. roster and the series as a whole, with Snake belonging to Konami and Sonic of course hailing from former rival Sega. Third party fighters would become a convention of Smash that would only expand following Brawl. The Vault the Vault is the name of the sub-menu in the Super Smash Bros. series that started its naming conventions in Brawl. The Vault features many of the collection and record-keeping elements of the game. This includes the album, challenges, chronicle, masterpieces, movies, records, replays, and sounds, as well as the trophy room and the sticker book. Coin Launcher Coin Launcher is the mini-game within the vault that acts as a method of acquiring trophies using coins collected in-game as ammunition. Each trophy requires 2-4 to four coins to be captured, 
with players having to press the fire button each time to shoot a coin, though the button can be held briefly and released to launch a coin at higher speed. Enemies can also appear in the mode, appearing in waves. Destroying entire waves of enemies increases the spawn rates of rare trophies, grants a small number of extra coins from 10 to 50, and can provide the player with some stickers. Tripping Tripping, officially referred to in-game as pratfalling, is the notorious addition to mechanics in Brawl in which a fighter trips, falls over, and sits in a stunned state. Some attacks can cause opponents to trip, and some items will cause tripping as well. In Brawl, when a player goes to dash, there exists a 1% chance that the character will trip. The game keeps track of the total number of pratfalls each character or name has experienced in group brawls. Stage Builder The Stage Builder is a feature that was newly introduced in Brawl that allows players to create their own custom stages by using the given stage parts. While limited in its earliest form, the Builder would expand as it continued to appear in the Smash series from that point on. Meta Knight This refers to the popular acknowledgement of how broken the then starter newcomer Meta Knight was in the competitive scene of Brawl. Meta Knight was infamously at the top of the Brawl tier list, putting him in the double S tier, due to numerous advantages. Meta Knight is very quick with fast ground speed, 5 mid-air jumps, and multiple air options which give him great mobility and excellent frame data in general. Meta Knight also possesses a lot of disjointed attacks with high range and priority, which along with the speed of his attacks allows him to keep out opponents and interrupt their approach without much risk. Meta Knight's edge guarding and recovery are both unarguably the best in the game due to their sheer amount of options easily able to make it back from anywhere off stage. His knockout moves are quick, powerful, and reliable. Meta Knight also possesses two incredible special moves in Mock Tornado and Shuttle Loop. The former is a top tier recovery option that is very difficult for most characters to punish, while the latter is not only a fantastic recovery move, but is also a fast, safe, and powerful long ranged attack with a great amount of utility. The winner is... Sakurai's Cat This refers to the somewhat hidden easter egg in the Pokemon Stadium 2 stage first seen in Brawl. The cabin in the stage's ice mode features a poster of a kitten on its walls. While it had been assumed to be the case for years, Sakurai himself would actually come out to confirm that it is in fact not his own pet cat. The easter egg would be featured in every version of the stage within the series. Character Select Sounds Character select sounds call to the sound effects that would come out of the Wii remote speaker whenever a fighter was selected on the character screen. I pointed this out because not only are these sounds seared in my memory, but some of them are extremely weird and hilarious. Just listen for yourself. Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection this addresses the entirety that encompasses the failed online feature of Brawl. There was much anticipation to finally have an online component with Smash's exciting take on the fighting genre, but the end result was disappointing to say the least. A primary point of interest was that it allowed players to either play with anyone in the world or with registered friends. The former, with anyone, allowed players to either take part in standard free-for-all battles via basic brawl or to play as part of a team in team battle. The latter contained an almost fully customizable rule set which allowed websites such as All Is Brawl to be formed with the aim of adding competition into the mix, spawning an online scene for competitive smash as a whole. The service however was inferior and it was often impossible to finish or even play a match online due to the poor performance. Project M Project M is a prominent brawl mod that was designed to make the gameplay more closely resemble that of Melee, as well as Smash 64 to a lesser extent. Project M's primary change from brawl is that the speed of gameplay has been increased and the character landing lag is shorter, coupled with the restoration of many Melee mechanics and elements, such as the addition of Mewtwo and Roy after their exclusion from brawl, 
development of the mod officially finished in 2015, with version 3.6 being the last official release of Project M. The mod is so big that it has been featured at many national tournaments, and it remains the most popular gameplay mod of Brawl in tournament settings. Despite the end of Project M's official development, it still has been able to hold its tournament presence separate from Brawl. Sonic Delayed Brawl This refers to the common belief that the late addition of Sonic the Hedgehog to Brawl forced the game to be pushed back to its eventual quarter run 2008 release. This current thought is that Sonic has always been planned for Brawl, something that isn't far-fetched as he had been desired and rumored to be added to the series even prior to Melee. However, Nintendo still required legal clearance from Sega to finalize Sonic's edition. To the surprise of Brawl's development team, Sega still turned them down. As Brawl neared completion, Sega would actually change their minds and reportedly begged for Sonic to be put on Brawl's roster. Nintendo agreed as it was their vision the entire time, and had to make adjustments to have Sonic available in the game. This subsequently caused Brawl's delay since Sakurai and the team had not only add Sonic but his series music, stage, trophies, and stickers as well as his role in the Subspace Emissary. This is the reason why Sonic appears the latest into the campaign and acts as the Deus Ex Machina of the plot. This may also explain why Sonic's Brawl moveset seemed uninspired to most and heavily used animations of him in ball form to save time on models. Smash Dojo The Smash Bros Dojo is the official site for Brawl that Sakurai used to post information on the game every weekday. The site was formally updated every day before the release of the title to introduce new characters, tools, and modes to the game. Many of the fans feverishly monitored Smash Dojo to see any little information about new additions to Brawl, and a highlight of Brawl's anticipation was the site's continuous reveals of new and returning fighters to the game, most notably the reveal of Sonic on October 10, 2007 on the site with a corresponding trailer, caused an explosion in the video game community that showed as a precursor to the series' pure potential for virality that was realized during the rollouts of new fighters in the games that followed. Snake's Codec Calls The codec conversations are a hidden easter egg for Snake introduced in Brawl with unique dialogue regarding his opposition in the match. These conversations are initiated by inputting the down taunt command for just one frame in Shadow Moses Island. If done correctly, Snake will kneel and touch the codec receiver in his ear. The codec message will begin after a few seconds if Snake is left undisturbed. He can only perform the smash tar once per match. Even if he is interrupted during the initial animation, in matches where Snake has more than one opponent, the subject will be selected randomly. Stickers Stickers are a collectible item that was introduced and exclusive to Brawl. They are similar to trophies. However, stickers can be used in the Subspace Emissary to boost certain aspects or stats of a character. Additionally, stickers can be added to a background and made into a collage inside the sticker album menu. There are 700 stickers. Collecting all of them will unlock the special stickers trophy. Samus and Pikachu This refers to the research facility stages in Subspace Emissary where Samus from the Metroid series encounters and teams up with Pikachu from the Pokemon series as part of the developing storylines within the mode. The reason why this is prominent is that the duo will become popular among the fans, with lots of art of the two online, admiring the unique pairing that came about in Subspace. Masterpiece Speedruns Masterpieces, introduced in Brawl, are free, time-limited trial versions of classic Nintendo titles in which the characters of Smash have appeared. To save time, masterpieces skip games, title, and open sequences. Certain masterpieces start at specific points of the game that are relevant to the Smash game they appear in, such as the Donkey Kong masterpiece starting at the 75M level, while games that supported saving have some built-in saves set to various points of the game. The time limit varies from game to game. With that being said, speedrunning these games seem nearly impossible at face value, as the player only gets a handful of minutes to play the games before their trial runs out. 
so it is mind-boggling that some players have successfully finished games like The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Star Fox 64 in Masterpiece mode. For example, in 2021, Save State beat Ocarina of Time in just 4 minutes and 38 seconds. Geno Geno is a character from the Super Mario universe. Unlike most characters from the universe, he was not originally created by Nintendo, but instead by Square Enix for the 1996 Super Nintendo title, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. A cult classic game in itself, Geno has garnered a cult following as a character, and for as long as many Smash fans remember, there has been clamoring for Geno to be added to the Smash roster. In Brawl, there was actually some fair potential for Geno to be included, as Sakurai considered him as a fighter since he was aware of Geno's popularity and felt he could easily fit in the game. However, this consideration fell through, likely due to him being owned by Square Enix, technically putting him in the weird gray area third-party candidates find themselves in often, despite the fact that Geno's sole appearance is in a Mario title. All-Star Mode! Scrapped Fighters This refers to the scrapped fighters that were discovered to be cut after digging deeper through the game data of Brawl. Within the files of Brawl, former melee fighters such as Dr. Mario, Mewtwo, and Roy were present, suggesting that the roster wasn't meant to be as small as the final product was. Dixie Kong from the Donkey Kong Country series and Tetra from Wind Waker were also in the game's files. Toon Zelda Speaking of Tetra, in Brawl's files, Tetra is actually referred to as Toon Zelda. Both Toon Zelda and Toon Sheik are in the game's files. Now it is uncertain if Toon Sheik would be Tetra, or if there was a planned cell shaded version of the Zelda and Sheik pairing that we were accustomed to from Melee. Lucario replaced Mewtwo. This acknowledges the popular headcanon that Lucario replaced Mewtwo in Brawl. While it is understandable why this is a common belief, as Diamond and Pearl were the newest Pokemon releases surrounding Brawl, Lucario was a prominent Pokemon for the series' fourth generation due to the games surrounding media and it made sense that Nintendo wanted to push the promotion. With that being said, there is still no documented confirmation from anyone working on Brawl that specifies that Mewtwo was dropped solely for Lucario's addition. Super Death Jump the Super Death Jump is a type of Super Jump that occurs in Stamina Mode in Brawl. If a character's HP is reduced to zero while receiving momentum from a special move, such as various up specials, the character will not stop, instead continue flying along their current trajectory. Usually this results in being flung rather high as most relevant moves throw the user upwards. The timing required is typically very precise. A simple way of accomplishing the jump is to use the flower effect, then use the relevant special move at the correct time. Only 15 fighters are capable of doing an attack that can trigger the super death jump, with those being Mario, Luigi, Ganondorf, Samus, Kirby, Meta Knight of course, King DDD, Wolf, Captain Falcon, Pikachu, Charizard, Lucario, Marth, Ike, and Mr. Game & Watch. Dixie and Diddy's moveset. In an interview regarding Smash, Sakurai himself actually revealed that he originally intended to have Dixie Kong as part of Diddy Kong's moveset, similar to how the two functioned in their game of origin, Donkey Kong Country 2. It could be speculated that the characters would have even shared a slot or acted as a single fighter, much like Zelda and Sheik or that of the Ice Climbers. Battle Damage After going through Brawl's files, textures for characters like Captain Falcon, Link, Meta Knight, and Lucas shows things like Falcon's cracked helmet, Link's cracked shield, and Meta Knight's cracked mask, suggesting that it was actually supposed to be visible battle damage included within gameplay. This was confirmed by Sakurai as well who stated, in the beginning, we had a system where swords would break or equipment would be destroyed. After you lost your stock and respawned, your equipment would be repaired. But people who survived, so basically the better, more skilled players, would be at a disadvantage. 
and I wanted to include a system like that. This game is a game of accidents, so I wanted to include things that would change the situation around. Ultimately, it was left out due to time constraints. This also explains why Captain Falcon's model has eyes, despite them being covered by his helmet. Blastoise with Pokemon Trainer This suggests that Blastoise was supposed to be one of the three Pokemon that Pokemon Trainer uses to fight in Brawl. This is another confirmed rumor from Sakurai, who wanted Blastoise in the game. However, he changed his mind, saying that he felt that Squirtle was a better fit and the size dynamic between Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard was more favorable. Scrapped Trophies This acknowledges the canned trophies that were meant to appear among the rest of the trophies in Brawl's final version. Some include Donkey Kong Country characters and older models from Melee. Most significant was the fact that each fighter was supposed to have secondary alternate trophies like Melee instead of the final smash trophies that are presented in Brawl, and many of these trophies can still be found in the game's files. Nintendo Killed Brawl Comp This refers to the belief that Nintendo themselves are solely responsible for the fact that Brawl was such a smaller attraction for competitive gaming in comparison to Melee. This is due to many things, including Nintendo refusing to allow MLG better known as Major League Gaming, to have streaming rights to the game in 2010, effectively ending Brawl's chances to stay on the circuit. A more general way that many see how Nintendo killed competitive Smash during the Brawl era was the fact that the game's mechanics were seen as unfavorable to comp play in general, especially in comparison to Melee. Where Melee was fast and flexible due to skills like dash dancing, Brawl deliberately added a pratfalling where you could trip if you dash. Other popular moves from Melee like wave dashing and L canceling were removed as well, and the game as a whole felt disjointed for experienced players. On the developer's end, the entire change in Smash's gameplay between Melee and Brawl revolved around having the controls make sense with the limited options of the Wii Remote. As Sakurai stated that he wanted to make the game easier to play, which was his number one priority, but another one of the reasons was that you used the Wii Remote to play. Brawl Pikachu is Melee Pikachu. This refers to a fan theory that the playable Pikachu in Brawl is actually the older and evolved version of the Pichu playable in Melee. This is mainly believed because both Pichu in Melee and Pikachu in Brawl have alternate costumes that feature them sporting blue goggles. And while this is really just a coincidence for all things considered, that hasn't stopped some theories from going a step further, pointing out that Brawl Pikachu is faster and has stronger electric attacks than Melee Pikachu, similar to Pichu. Brawl Pikachu's Skull Bash reaches farther and is more horizontal than Melee Pikachu, similar to Pichu. Brawl Pikachu can wall jump like Pichu, and Pikachu in its original game can only learn Volt Tackle by breeding a female Pikachu with any male electric Pokemon that knows Volt Tackle, with the offspring being Pichu. Grab the coins. Pra underscore my. Pra underscore my is the text found in Brawl's code that has led a majority of Smash fans to believe that Plusle and Minin from the third generation of the Pokemon series were meant to appear in Brawl as fighters. This is because the text is seemingly abbreviated versions of the two characters' Japanese names. While I think it was a decent possibility for them to be fighters, as Pichu was already a small representative in Melee who technically represented the second generation of Pokemon, and Ruby and Sapphire were still technically the latest mainline titles in the Pokemon series in Brawl's earliest stages of development, since Diamond and Pearl had only been out for a little over a year at Brawl's release, I believe it is a lot more likely that they were intended to be an assist trophy. With that being said, they still do make an appearance in Brawl as regular trophies. Hidden Mr. Saturn this refers to the hidden sprite of Mr. Saturn that could be found under the Metroid trophy. There hasn't been any explanation as to why it's there, 
or if there's any significance. So we can make the safe assumption that it is simply a neat little easter egg for anyone digging through Brawl's files. Wolf was Crystal This is regarding the rumor that Wolf's roster spot in Brawl was originally supposed to go to another Star Fox representative, Crystal from Star Fox Adventures, notably the most recent release in the Star Fox series up to that point. Sakurai addresses this directly as well. Apparently, Wolf was an extremely late addition to Brawl's roster, almost solely due to the demand for him online and specifically on Smash Dojo. Justifying his addition by pointing out that all of the characters with higher demand, Wolf was the easiest to implement in the game with the time crunch that they had. Something that is pretty obvious as many people hold disdain for Wolf for essentially being a lazy clone of Fox and Falco. Regarding Crystal, Sakurai would say that the team didn't have any of the technical modeling knowledge that we have cultivated for Fox and Falco that they had with Crystal. So it was like making a brand new character from scratch. And because of the limited amount of time that they had, creating Crystal wasn't realistically possible. On that point with Wolf, he said, we already have some knowledge of how to model his character and would require about 70% of the effort required to create a whole new character. And also saying that in the end, the three playable characters in this game from Star Fox are Fox and Falco, and on top of that, Wolf, because he was popular and easy to create. On the other hand, if it was a situation where it wasn't easy to create this character and we had to make him from scratch, Star Fox may not have had three representatives. So please think of Wolf as a lucky inclusion. Basically saying that they didn't have time or the desire for the effort that would go into adding Crystal, and that everyone should be grateful that Star Fox even got a third representative in the first place. <laughs> Thank you, Sakurai. <laughs> Scrapped subspace enemies. This regards the numerous files found in Brawl's code that suggest that many more enemies were supposed to be featured in the Subspace Emissary campaign. Some of these cut enemies include Blade Knight, Bonkers, Bronto Burt, Waddle Dees, and Waddle Doos, all from the Kirby series, as well as Dry Bones and Buzzy Beetle from Mario. Boo Under the Bed Boo Under the Bed refers to a secret in the Luigi's Mansion stage of the game, where under Chauncey's crib, the texture of a boo face can be seen. It is not present under the crib in the original Luigi's Mansion and is the same texture used for the bull ball item that could have been imported by mistake or maybe just another sneaky easter egg. Peach and Perry This regards the fact that there are files in Brawl that strongly suggest that Peach's parasol that she has in game was actually supposed to be Perry and not just her regular standard one. Perry hails from the obscure 2005 DS title Super Princess Peach and was a talking parasol that the princess used as a weapon to defeat enemies. The textures for Perry Trophy featured in Brawl are named Peach Tech C through Peach Tech F, which matches the naming convention for Peach's textures. Furthermore, the model for Peach's normal umbrella scene in game is named Weapon Peach Kassar. Kassar is Perry's Japanese name again indicating that Peach was originally going to have Perry as her parasol weapon. Space Jumps Space jumping is a move that could be done by Player 2 in the Subspace Emissary. When used, Player 2's character is quickly relocated to wherever Player 1 currently is, regardless of any obstacles in the way. This is done when Player 2 presses the pause button when Player 2 is about to be knocked out when not in hit stun and when player 1 enters a vehicle such as the barrel cannon. Pokemon Trainer will perform a similar move in the background to keep up with his Pokemon as they progress through a stage. However, the light that relocates him is reddish orange, unlike the blue-white light for the playable characters themselves. If a space jump is in progress while player 1 is not on screen after being knocked out, the teleporting player will be stuck in place until player 1 respawns. This move's origins can be traced back to Kirby Superstar, where Kirby's partner could warp between Kirby's location if it was far from it. However, if the partner held the A button down, it would be locked in teleport indefinitely, and if the button was tapped repeatedly, the helper would eventually self-destruct. In the game's post-brawl remake, Kirby Superstar Ultra, 
This teleport function is even referred to as the space jump, likely a nod to the similarities acknowledged by the user base. Orden Sword The Orden Sword is a weapon from the Zelda series introduced in Twilight Princess. The sword was the blade that Link was meant to bring to Hyrule to present to the royal family of Hyrule before he was dragged into the Twilight. In the Files for Brawl, Link's body B texture has textures for the Orden Sword. This could mean that Link was initially to wield the Orden Sword instead of the Master Sword. However, I think the right decision was made as the iconic weapon is synonymous with Link's identity. Scrapped Music There were tons of music that were cut from Brawl's final release, some that could still be found in the game's files. These tracks that are hidden include music from games like Mario and Luigi, Partners in Time, Link's Awakening, Yoshi's Cookie, Star Fox Command, Stunt Race FX, and most intriguing to me, You Can Do Anything. One of the themes from the international soundtrack of Sonic CD from the Sega CD. It's unknown why most of these didn't make the cut. However, it is easy to assume that the Sonic track simply wasn't clear due to licensing issues. Full Games in Masterpiece Mode This refers to the theory that the games available in Masterpiece Mode are full-fledged ROMs that are simply locked from full accessibility due to the time trial fashion of the mode. While I can't confirm that the full versions of these games are nestled in the game's files, it seems logical to me that this is the case, especially since, as we touched upon earlier, players have beaten a handful of these games within the mode. Longest Piece of English Literature This refers to the alleged record once held by a Brawl fanfic at one point. The Subspace Emissary's World Conquest was written by Aura Chandler Chris beginning in 2008 and last updated a decade later in 2018. The total word count of the story was well over 4 million words, which is more than some of the combined word counts of the most lengthy book series in history. Now, it's believed that this record has since been broken, but I'm not sure which text exactly holds the crown currently. It would be insane if true, but I've even heard that it was potentially broken by a separate Smash fanfic. What a fan base. Slip Space Text in the game's code revealed that an online beat-em-up mode called Slip Space was planned, but for whatever reason was cut from the game. Its name, as well as the remaining text around it, implies that it may have been intended to function as a continuous match, in which players could drop in and out to be replaced by other players. The coding is very much primitive, with no existing servers in place, rendering it totally unplayable. Kirby GCM Models This is in reference to the belief that the models used for the assist trophies of characters from the Kirby series are initially from a cancelled Kirby project for the GameCube. This Kirby game was the same one that was shown off during E3 2005 and would never see the light of day. This hasn't been confirmed by any of the devs, but it would be a great use of assets if true, which is likely. Mizzo Mizzo is an unused original enemy that was supposed to be present in the Subspace Emissary. It can only be found in a display room in the Battleship Halberd exterior, along with other subspace enemies, and can be seen attached to two blue tentacles in attempts to swim around. Its appearance and motion, alongside how the trophy description specifies its swimming motions, suggest that it was originally going to be an enemy encountered in the water as does the fact that its name comes from the Japanese word Mizu, which means water. In spite of being cut from the actual subspace campaign, it does possess in-game animation files, though most are bugged and result in limbs tearing across the screen or crashing. It could be noted that the Mizu appearing on the halberd is considered a stage model by the game, not an actual enemy. Now, as a child, I hated playing some parts of subspace, as I really thought the original enemy designs were unnerving, to say the least, but this one is just borderline scary, and I for one am glad Mizzo was axed in action. Subspace Original Enemies from Scrapped Game 
This is a popular theory that suggests that the original enemies in subspace were initially intended for a cancel or scrapped separate title. There is no evidence for this speculation, but I understand why many people can't believe this. In my opinion, along with being spooked by much of them, I never felt that the characters introduced fit the rest of the Smash universe and that more enemies from represented series should have been included in Brawl instead. X Parasite's Item This refers to a lost or even cut item that was supposed to be present in Brawl's final game. In the internal spawning list of training mode items, there contains entries for a hover disc and in a specified variant of the X Parasite from Metroid Fusion, items which aren't so much as referenced anywhere else in the game. Humans in Mario Kart In Mario Kart, the races throughout the series have consistently been conducted with an audience made up of a handful of different species in the Mario universe, such as Toads, Shy Guys, etc. However, in the Mario Circuit stage of Brawl, there are humans in the crowd. It's not a noticeable factor in the midst of a live match of Smash, and it is likely just a quick reuse of assets as the crowd texture can be found in at least one other stage, but it still is a weird instance and likely would mark the only time humans were in a crowd in a Mario Kart canon race. Snake's Head This refers to the hidden text that is present on some of the textures of Snake's Head for his model in Brawl. The texture for Snake's head has some red text written in an empty area near the hair tufts. It reads DEF NFO LAYER, though the top of the letters are usually hidden by alpha transparency. This text is present for each of Snake's alternate colors. It's not sure what exactly it was placed there for, but it likely was a point of reference for the devs that accidentally got left in. Boss 1 Boss 1 is a texture found in the game that comprises of Giga Bowser's melee stock icon with Boss Run written on it. Chances are it was a placeholder used to mark subspace emissary boss icons. Online Boss Battle Like the slip space mode brought up earlier, every one player mode including event matches, training, break the targets, all star, and most notably boss battles can be selected as an available option online, but none of them function correctly, and in most cases, it is unlikely that they were ever planned to be allowed online and were merely implemented as such to safeguard against crashing. However, the online version of boss battles had seemingly been worked on much greater than the others, with adjustable difficulty settings and a co-op high score implemented, implying that it was a last minute cut to the game's final version. Peach AR Of all the hidden textures brought up in this video, this may be the oddest. In Peach's files, one of the things discovered was a small icon of an assault rifle. There was no reasoning for why this texture is there, but it is. Post-apocalyptic mushroom kingdom This is a theory regarding the mushrooming kingdom stage that was introduced to the series in Brawl. The overall look and design of the stage is drab and dull, and much more realistic compared to the other stages hailing from the Mario series. Playing Brawl as a kid, I always thought it was a little strange as well. But mind you, the entire aesthetic of Brawl is low saturation and a touch of hyperrealism, so I thought it made sense. However, some people have gone a step further, believing that the stage reflects the desolate state of a mushroom kingdom post-apocalypse. Of course, it's nothing more than to fit Brawl's style, but it would be cool if there was some merit to this. And we've reached the end of the iceberg. If you got this far, shout out to you. Again, I know I'm real late on this trend, but to celebrate one of my favorite games of all time, I had to come back and give it a go. I hope you all enjoyed it, and let me know which one was your favorite. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know if there are any other games you would like to see get their own icebergs or just their own videos in general. There are a lot of games celebrating anniversaries this year that I plan on covering, so make sure to comment on what you want to see. With all that being said, as always, take care, good game, and thank you so much for watching. Here's to a good 2023 for everyone. Peace. 
and happy early 15th birthday to Brawl. <laughs> Peace.